All right, everybody, today we're gonna to be going over the Neomag Alias. This is a holster attachment system, basically a way to remove the traditional plastic uh, belt clips that you would normally carry with um, for a method that slides onto your belt. It's more concealable, it's more rigid since it's not made of uh, plastic, and in my opinion, it's just generally easier to use um, than these belt clips. These can be a little tight, especially when you're talking about your EDC gun belts, which are already kind of rigid. Uh, and these belt clips are sometimes, uh, I mean, you know, they're a little flimsy, but they're also just a pain in the ass to put on the belt itself. So I'm going to go over today what this system is, what it isn't, and uh, we're going to put that onto the uh, holster. I have a works holster here with my um, Glock 19 and uh, test it out and see how it goes. So first what you'll need for this is any kind of screwdriver, right? As long as it has the attachments you need for this, I need a Phillips head. Um, this one definitely has Phillips heads, right? As most screwdrivers will. So we'll get that in place. We'll go ahead and put the, um, the clip onto the holster and then I'll go over putting the holster piece uh, onto the belt. So first off, you know, what do you get with this? Um, what I have here is the top mount prototype. This is basically uh, if your holster has a, an attachment where the holes are at the top, as you can see, this one does have top mounts as well as lower mounts. Currently using two clips on the lower mount and again it's because these are kind of not as rigid so I might try out the top clip here and just have one uh, one point as well as that comes with some spacers metal and rubber it looks like uh, part of the alias system itself though the standard what you're getting is you're getting the belt clip right so this goes onto the belt um, and your uh, holster claw here this metal piece would slide into the belt system so you can see Essentially, your belt's going to go, actually, I think that's the wooden belt. This is the belt mount. So your belt's going to slide in through the top here. Um, very low viz compared to a normal belt clip, right? So the normal clip you're going to have covering the entire belt. This is just going to be looking at just the top and the bottom parts. Everything else is going to ride inside of the belt. And then in addition, this would mount on the holster as shown right and then that's going to slide down and lock up into the belt area in order to get off there's a clip here on the bottom you would just push that let's see over and then be able to slide that right out so much faster than having to use the belt clips while providing a more stable platform so the first thing i'm going to do um obviously i'm going to remove the gun here uh this is my carry gun and it is made ready so i'm just going to set that over to the side here uh, verify there's nothing else in my holster and then i'm going to start the disassembly now, if you got your holster uh, from a company already pre-assembled, you may have to reach in there and actually hold these spacers down as you go, not spacer, but the back screw uh, as you're unscrewing from the top, uh, depending on how it's made, who made it, etc. So we'll slide those to the side. I'm going to work on my second one here. This is made much easier with the... Uh, I don't even know what you call this, a ratchet, uh, ratchet screwdriver, double action screwdriver, I'm not sure. This one's being very stubborn. So this is one of those I was talking about where the back is wanting to rotate as I'm uh, trying to loosen the front. So I'm going to have to hold it in place while I loosen on top. All right, well, that one's being a real pain in the ass, so I'm going to have to uh, find a better way to take that off. Okay, so after struggling to remove the um, bottom screw on this uh, 
final clip. I have gotten it off, and I'm going to go ahead and go with the top mount for this. I'm going to use the bottom of the two mounting points for the middle. Uh, that's going to give me kind of maximum contact with my holster claw here, and that's very important uh, to make sure that the uh, weapon is pressed away from the belt, kind of closer to the trim of the body, uh, which will greatly reduce your printing. So, going to go ahead and put that in place, and I'm using the same um, setup that I was using from the holster claw. So, what I mean by that, basically, it's these back screws here um, with the internal threading, uh, a spacer, right, and then the top screw. So let me go ahead and get all of those pulled over uh, from my last setup. There we are. Then we'll go ahead and get this started. So try not to drop it like that. I'll go ahead and index that through the bottom hole, through the holster, claw, mount, whatever you want to call it. And we'll put that spacer on there to hold it in place while we get the second one set up. So same thing here. Index, put that rubber spacer on to hold it still, and then we can start screwing this into position. And I knocked the spacer right through. So it might be easier to get that started by hand first. So you don't do what I did and push the uh, back screw out. So we get those started by hand. And then I'll go ahead and tighten those down. One of the first things I'm noticing is as I'm tightening this, the back screws, and you guys can't really see that, are starting to rotate. Um, so the way that I ended up getting that one out when it was spinning on me, I couldn't really use my the pad on my finger because it was just twisting on that. So I actually took one of the other spacers I already had, used that as kind of leverage to hold the back screw in place. And then I was able to, in that case, loosen, but in this case I'm going to be able to tighten a little better with that without having the back screw spin. Just like that. Okay, so now that we have the um, mount in place, we can look at the um, different mounting points, right? So uh, the first one, right, the uh, alias is the entire system, but this is the belt mount, and this is going to be a mount for um, really anything that you um, could screw it onto, right? So uh, some guys will mount these inside of their vehicles. Uh, some people will put them maybe um, in a drawer, under their desk, uh, in a nightstand. And really what it's going to allow you to do is when you have um, your holster and you're going from your belt, right? So we'll say that this is mounted to your belt. Uh, and at the end of the day, you get home, be able to remove it from your belt by sliding this over and then pulling it off. You can see it's a tight grip. <laughs> to then being able to mount this um, at home. So if this was mounted, say, in your nightstand, you know you're gonna go from your holster, pop out of there, and then you can easily flip this back over, mount that uh, at your nightstand. And it's going to dismount the same way. You've got the same system. You slide across, and then that easily just pulls uh, right out of the mount itself. Now, speaking on the actual belt mount, um, I'm guessing that this is an inch and a half. Uh, I've got a ruler somewhere, and I've tried it out with a few of my different EDC belts. So the first one here that I've got, this is a Next Belt um, Supreme Appendix, and I like this belt. Um, it is very rigid. It works well. You can see it's got the ratchet system. The only downside to the ratchet system that I found is that it's loud, it's noisy. So when you're going for concealment, uh, you don't really want people knowing that you're wearing a gun belt. And uh, as you can hear, you know, say you're using the restroom, when you're putting this on, um, 
it, it makes some noise unless you're hitting the, the button on the bottom to allow that to uh, slide through. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna make that sound. Now, with the next belt itself, the uh, alias works pretty well. It slides right over the front here, uh, and then it slides down the length of the belt. Now, it's a pretty tight fit, um, definitely tighter than the belt loop, as we can see. So if I slide that down through here, the belt clamp slides freely, no issue at all, and the alias is pretty tight on there. So that's, that's a good thing on this belt in particular. And I'm gonna pull it back off this other belt I have here is a Segura, Segura, um, I'm gonna say Segura. And it is essentially the same width, right, as the uh, next belt, or it should be at least, an uh, inch and a half. Um, but the alias does not fit onto the Segura. So I'm trying to get it on there. This is a pretty rigid belt as well. I'm gonna slide this out of the way for right now. And you can see that I'm just, I can't get over this little corner. So it's just barely too small to fit onto the Segura belt. Now that could be due deviations in the manufacturing process, either at, um, at Neomag or at Segura, and I just ended up with the wrong thing. Um, full disclosure, the Neomag, uh, the actual magazine carrier that I have here, I also had to go through a couple different ones to find the perfect fit for this Glock magazine. Um, some were a little too tight um, and the Glock mag actually would not index out of there without literally having to hold the mag carrier in place to be able to pull it out. So I went through a few. Um, we had a box of these to be able to look over and uh, this one in particular ended up being the perfect fit. Um, so I just wanted to mention that as we talk about potential deviations in the manufacturing process. Um, the tolerances on these, uh, I don't know what they are, but uh, just, just one thing of note there. Uh, so next we'll go ahead and put this onto the next belt, mount up, and then test out how the overall system works uh, in the holster from the draw on the belt itself. Alright again, so we have the uh, alias mounting system here from Neomag. And uh, as I just talked about, uh, it fit my next belt, Supreme Appendix EDC belt, but it did not fit my Sakura belt. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this on to the next belt, uh, and then we'll take a look at the uh, holster placement, how comfortable that is. Like I said, it's a little bit of a tight fit. You know, I've got the belt on already, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and slide this on here. I like to carry just right of appendix um, at true 12 o'clock. So I usually put mine right up here against the uh, this first belt loop. Go ahead and put this belt on. I'll leave a little space in there for the holster itself. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my weapon here. So I'll pull the magazine out. Did have a round in the chamber. That up. Don't leave rounds floating around. Don't be a clown. Um, so now my weapon is empty. It is safe. I'm going to verify that. All right. So re index that there and go ahead and attempt to mount the holster. So let's see. Because this is now a front mount and not on the two sides as I had it, I actually have to sit this a little closer to uh, the 12 o'clock position. Go ahead and slide that in. Got my mount there. Uh, the first note is it sits really close to the holster itself. So uh, it's already, my pants are kind of snagging on that. And I will attempt to get it into the holster itself or into the mount, I should say. Yeah, that is a tight fit for sure. Uh, the holster claw is doing its work. And I'll go ahead and cover up. So, um, just first glance, I mean, I think it prints just as much as any other holster attachment system. There's not really a change to the design overall. I mean, I had this one mounting point. Um, sticks out a little far, but still less than the claw itself. 
uh, less than the belt loops would. So overall, I mean, it's it's functioning as intended, right? So let me go ahead and attempt to remove it from the holster. That was the gun. <laughs> yeah, it just slides right out. That is already so much easier than the belt loops. The belt loops I would have to pry up individually one by one or what I actually ended up doing most of the time is just taking the belt off and then sliding the holster off the edge of the belt. So removal definitely much easier. Um, putting it on, I don't know. It could be that I'm a dumbass and I mounted the um, the actual mount right up against the holster instead of on the outside of the spacers. I don't know if that was the way it was intended uh, or not, but right up against the holster itself um, doesn't really work for me. So maybe I'm going to try to move it to the outside of the spacers and we'll see if that makes a difference. Alright guys, I'm back. So I made two modifications uh, to the holster itself. I went from, uh, like I mentioned, putting the claw on the inside of the spacer to putting it on the outside of the spacer. I don't know if you can really see that from where you are. If not, I'll just cut in some footage here um, to show that. Uh, so now I have the screw contacting directly to the mount itself, the spacer underneath um, contacting the holster. And what that does is it's going to push the mount out a little further away from the holster so I'll be able to get the pants and the mount, um, the actual alias mount inside. Uh, there with ease and it puts it basically level with the holster claw so it's not going to be extending any further out than any other uh, part on your holster itself. The other um, change I made, I actually raised um, the mount from the bottom uh, two holes on the top mount up to the top just to have the holster ride a little lower. I noticed in reviewing the footage it was riding pretty high when I went to sit down really started to impact that lower rib. So. Now that I have this mounted differently, let's go ahead and try it out and see if that makes a difference. So I get the pants over the claw. Already, this is basically perfectly lined up um, with the alias itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in. Seamless. It just clicks right into place. The holster claw is actually in the perfect position. So earlier I had it too high and we'll go ahead and cover up again and you know just like i said about printing earlier you can't really see it unless you're you know exactly looking for it nine times out of ten people are not going to be looking for it um and so no one's really going to know it's there so uh it mounted perfectly very quickly um to put in and then to take off again you just slide over make sure you grip the holster uh, and it should just yep pop right out. That is a million times easier than using the belt loops. So much easier. And then if I had this, um, the alias mounted anywhere else in the house, I could just walk right up, slide that in. If it was mounted in the car, drop the holster in for ease of use while you're driving um, and without having to wear that on body while in the vehicle. Now make sure you check with your state laws. Some states allow you to mount uh, your weapon in the car, some have very strict rules about where you can quote unquote conceal that weapon within your vehicle. So make sure you check that out and don't do anything illegal that would otherwise get you in trouble. Um, but yeah, overall, this I think is a total game changer for EDC. I'm going to keep this mounted on my, uh, my holster and I'm going to pretty much just use the alias moving forward. The belt loops, throwing them in the garbage. Um, they are of no use to me now. So guys, uh, if you like that information, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll try to post some more EDC stuff moving forward, some other firearms related topics. Uh, and if I can be asked to actually edit a video, uh, maybe some gaming videos here and there. If you like it, stay tuned.